Hi, Michelle Seitz here. You're watching Ruler Tabs and Text Alignment. Here's the scenario. You have a number of paragraphs in your document and you want them to align so that all the text are directly under each other. Watch this video to learn how to do this, as well as learn about all the different types of tabs in Word. So you will need to have the ruler displayed. To do this, go to the View tab and click on Ruler. Your horizontal ruler is displayed on the top of your document. Also, the tab selections are displayed here. The tabs can be changed by clicking on this selection. The first tab is the left tab. Click once and the center tab is displayed. Click again and the right tab is displayed. Keep clicking for more selections, such as the decimal tab, the bar tab, the first line indent, and the hanging indent. And then your selection reverts back to the left tab. You can add tabs and indents to the ruler by first selecting the tab of your choice here and then clicking on the ruler. So if you want a left tab, since the left tab is selected, just click on the ruler. Hit the tab key and start typing. If you want your text to start in the center of the document, you would choose the center tab. Select the center tab here, click on the ruler, hit the tab key, and start typing. For your text to be aligned at the right margin, you'll want the right tab selection. Click the right tab selection here, click on the ruler, and then if you want it in the right margin, select the right tab and drag it over to the right margin. Hit the tab key and start typing. Also note that as soon as you hit the Enter key, the next line will revert back to the left aligned until you hit the Tab key again. The left, center, and right tabs are fairly self-explanatory. However, the other tab selections need more explanation. Let's start with the Decimal tab. This tab is useful when you have a few rows of numbers that you want aligned on the decimal point. For example, if I had some numbers, such as I have here, and I wanted them aligned more toward the right side of the screen, I could add the decimal tab separately on each line, or I could highlight the entire selection and then select the decimal tab, and then click on the ruler at the position I want them aligned. If you highlight the entire selection, after entering the tab on the ruler, you must deselect the text by selecting anywhere else in the document and then put your cursor before the numbers and hit the tab until they align at the decimal tab. If you do not deselect the highlighting and hit the tab key, your text will be deleted. Now you can see all the decimals are aligned. Remember, anytime you accidentally delete any text, just hit the Control and Z buttons or hit the Undo icon. The next tab selection is the bar tab. This tab will not position any text, but will only insert a vertical bar at the tab location. You don't need to hit the tab key. Just add the bar tabs on the ruler at the correct positions. With your cursor on that line, just type and the bar tabs will remain static and you can type right through them. While this example is not a practical application, I did it for effect. A more practical application would be to have some numbers and then apply the bar tabs between them. I'll highlight my selection and click on the ruler. When you no longer want the bars displayed, you can pull them off the ruler. The next tab selection is the first line indent icon. So I'll add some text here 
and show you what this icon can do. When this icon is selected and you click on the ruler with your mouse, the icon will move to that position. The first line of text only will start here. So in the first line of four score and seven years ago, the first line of text started at the first indent icon position. The next tab selection is the hanging indent icon. This icon is also represented on the ruler. This icon will align all the text in a selection except the first line of text. So if I click on the ruler, all of the text will move to this position. I can also click on this icon and drag it and the text will move to that position. So I'm going to highlight these two paragraphs and I'm going to show you what happens when I align both of these icons, the first line indent and the hanging indent. There's a little box below both of those icons. When both of these icons are aligned, the first line indent and the hanging indent, the little box will move all of the text at once to the position of your choice. Here's a hint. Click once outside the margin on the left side of your document. We'll highlight one line of text. Click twice and the entire paragraph will be highlighted. Click three times very quickly and the entire document will be highlighted. It's a little different on the right margin. Clicking twice highlights the last item in the row. Click three times and the paragraph will be highlighted. So at this position I have set some tabs to show you another way you can add tabs to the ruler in a more precise manner. Go to the Format tab and select Paragraph. The Paragraph dialog box is displayed. On this screen, click the Tabs button on the bottom left. This will display the Tabs dialog box. To start, this is the default Tab Stops field. If you did not add any tabs to your ruler manually, the Tab button will move your cursor to the first Tab Stop set with these default increments. In this case, the tab would stop at every half inch. To change this, highlight the number or use the up and down arrows. I'll change it to an inch. In the tab stop position, you can see the tabs that I entered manually on the ruler. When you click on a number in this field, it will display the alignment and tab leader. This is left aligned with no tab leader. This is right aligned with a dot leader. If you need to clear a number from this field, select the number and hit the clear button. If you want to clear all of them, just hit the clear all button and start fresh. In the alignment area with the radio buttons, you can select the type of tab you want to position on the ruler. There's also a leader area with radio buttons with the selections none, dot leader, dash leader, or underscore leader. To add a new tab stop with a more precise position, First, if there was a number in this field, you can delete it and enter a new number and select the alignment and tab leader if needed. Then you would click set. Here I'll enter a left tab at 0.78 inches and click set. I'll also enter a right tab with a dot leader at six and a half inches and click set. Then I'll click OK because all of my tabs are set. Now I'll hit the tab key and enter my text. And when I hit the tab key again, it will move to the six and a half inch mark with a dot leader displayed. As long as the tabs are on the ruler, it will continue to add these types of tabs to each line until you pull them off the ruler or open the tabs dialog box and clear them. Now I'll clear these tabs and show you that since I set the default tab stops at one inch, now when I hit the tab key, my cursor will stop at every inch mark. And as you can see, it's stopping at every inch mark. And that is the end of this lesson, ruler tabs and text alignment.